Dr. Randall, the Soul Doctor, author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet, shares her 40 years of experience as a cross-cultural practitioner, medical futurist, and expert in 20 different modalities of healing, along with amazing interviews with some of the leading minds in medicine and big thinkers in all walks of life. The stories of our lives are the woven energies of our soul's paths. They feed and ignite the spiritual light that nourishes the universal soul, the one mind, the cosmic consciousness where we all come together. This podcast is going to be a deep dive into the personal stories of people who have made significant contributions to the planet. What formed them? What moved them to become these leaders and innovators that inspire us so? Hi, Lily. Hello. It's, it's so good to have you on Soul Stories. Yeah, it's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I know you met my friend, Olivia Hussey. Here? I was going to say, yes, I did meet Olivia Hussey in person. Yeah. Um, months ago. Incredible woman. Yes. Um, she was she preceded you on Soul Stories. She was actually one of my first guests on Soul Stories because I like to have people that are full of light, that are doing things to raise the consciousness of other people and subsequently the planet. And she told me you're one of those. So <laughs> I want to have you on too. Well, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So, this is Lily. How do you say your name? Bra Brash? Brash. Like Brash. Brash, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So, Lily Brash mm -hmm. is on a mission to become a universal voice for those that may be perceived differently. Because she she has been perceived differently, I think. Tell, tell us, how, were you, how have you been perceived differently? Yeah, um, my, well, like you said, I, I was um, I was born with a neuromuscular condition, uh, a rare, rare form of muscular dystrophy, which mm -hmm. affects all my muscles, my voice, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I speak, um, the way I climb stairs. And so most of my life I've been um, either, I felt as if I was being either pitied or people would look at me and say, would be shocked when they see that I'd have trouble climbing stairs because I can climb stairs slowly, but it looks different. It's more difficult for me. I can speak slowly, but it's more difficult for me. So it's either people are shocked when they find out that I live with a physical disability or, or I'm a um, medical um, issue, mm -hmm. and then it becomes... Um, People begin to, I feel people begin to pity me, and that's why I'm trying to change is the stigma surrounding people with disabilities or barriers in general. Uh-huh. Well, that's that's incredibly bold and also kind of you. I mean, you know, people are different. And one of the things that I like to teach is diversity. You know, we're all different people. And through diversity, we can bring unity. So I see you're on my you're on my path too, because <laughs> I'm trying to get people to understand that you know that it doesn't matter what color we are or what religion we are or what we have. You know, like even if we have cerebral palsy, you know, we're still people. We're still human, and we're part of humanity. And if you take a garden, for instance and you put all the plants really close together and they're all different, they like it. The, the, the more diverse they are, the better the yield they give. Isn't that interesting? So I think we're like plants. I think we're like plants and, you know, we can benefit from being close to each other and not separating over a difference. So, yeah. And by uh, sharing, you know, creating a platform for people to spread that light and, share that unity you're doing incredible work on your own and helping other people unite together i think it's very cool and i agree with 
Thank you. Thank you very much. So you, I'm interested in, you said you have a unique kind of muscular dystrophy since I'm a doctor and a healer and a neuroscientist. It's called centronuclear myopathy. Is that mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I would I would love to work with you. I don't know if you're interested or your family is interested, but maybe you could benefit from we could talk about it later. I I do this kind of testing where you look into the neurotransmitter levels and maybe looking into yours and giving you natural things that might improve them might help you. I don't know. So yeah. just a, it's just looking, a thought. I think that's, yeah, I think that we should definitely connect afterwards. Yeah. I'm you know, looking. yeah. You know, I helped Olivia overcome her challenges, which was huge too. So, yeah. Is that how you guys, have you guys been friends for years? Or well, no, we were friends before that, but you know, she, she did become my patient. Mm-hmm. And um, she's in my book. You should buy a copy of my book called Soul Doctoring, right. Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet. It's on Amazon right now for pre-sales. And she, or listen to her podcast if you haven't listened to it. She's amazing. But um, yeah, because she had uh, a terrible kind of cancer and we we uh, healed it, you know, with natural yeah. stuff. So. Wow. She, yeah, she abandoned uh, Western medicine and said, I just can't do it anymore. It's too harsh on me. Dr. Mm-hmm. Randall, can you help me? I said, yeah, I can. And, you know, we can always go back to it if we need to, you know. And mm-hmm. um, But she's she's overcome it. So that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's very cool. She shared with me a little bit about some of her struggles. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a blessing. Mm-hmm. So you said you have a very loving family and your um is Abba, does that mean father? Uh yeah, that that is that's what I call my dad. It means father in Hebrew. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Is Joel Brash. Mm-hmm. And he he has a he has a strong Jewish Orthodox faith. And you said that really helped you both physically and emotionally overcome your obstacles can you tell us a little bit about that yeah faith in general um i mean i used to be timid to speak about it to speak about um my faith or but but at the end of the day it's it's an understanding that there is a greater you know power beyond us or things that we don't know can help you feel fulfilled and what we cannot control so um, as I struggle and, and grew, um, grew up in life in general, and then struggled through some of my own barriers, I oftentimes turn to faith and just accepting what is, um, understanding we don't have control over, but we don't really anything. Um, we're just here. I, I feel I'm here to fulfill my, to do the best I can to f- fulfill my purpose. Um, but faith in Judaism and while I struggled and grew throughout life I had to begin to understand that I don't have control over really anything to be honest I'm here to do my best to fulfill my purpose do my best to have an impact on this world and uplift others to to find their own strength um, but as I struggled through some of my own barriers, I had to turn to faith to know that there is a greater power. There is stuff that we don't know and that everything really happens for a reason. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. And I I teach my students, too. It's like we're not really in control, you know, but yeah. and to realize that is a is a big thing and does help you on your on your soul path. But it what we are in control of is how we respond to something. Yeah. And then, and then knowing, you know, I mean, as far back as Hippocrates, he, he, he spoke about bringing spirit back into the body to, to create complete healing or true healing. 
And I've been talking about that for a long time. And people used to think, you know, she's she's wacko, but um, you know, they still they still liked it and followed me. So I mean, you know, and and now it's something that people talk about more commonly. You know that yeah. spirit, spirit. You know, I used to be on national television because I talk about the S word. You know, and the S word was not what you think. It was spirit. You know, that honoring the spirit and bringing the spirit back into the body is what ultimately would initiate healing. So you're so you're so right. You're so right. And I'm glad you figured that out. And I'm glad your faith gives you that because that's that's what it's supposed to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So. And then you you say, I am the creator of the Born to Prove, quote, unquote, Born to Prove Foundation, a film producer, motivational speaker, fitness competitor, and exercise enthusiast. I love that. So tell us about your foundation, Lily. Um, the foundation started, I went to my father about um, six to 12 months ago when I said to him, it was a pretty low moment in my life. Um, I said to him, you know, I'm just done feeling. I'm done. I don't want others to look at me and feel bad, feel pity. Um, I'd prefer others to look at me and see strength and a reminder of their own strength. And I tried to start something on my own. I tried to post about it on social media um, and I still wasn't getting the reaction. Um, that I really intended to get. And so my dad and I together, we started making these motivational videos with color and music and, um. Yes, they're beautiful. I've heard some of them. Thank you. Just the goal is to be positive and uplifting and shining light on some of my struggles to be vulnerable in a way that others can be too. Mm -hmm. So my mission is. Our mission of the foundation is just really, we're all born to grow. Every single one of us has barriers. Um, but together, like you mentioned, how uniting is so powerful. No matter where you come from, no matter what obstacles you have, if we unite, we can break through um, our barriers together. Yes. That's what we stand for. Absolutely. I agree. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, um, I mean, I don't see, I'm surprised people haven't responded more because you are so beautiful and your message is so beautiful, but it, you know, it takes a while too, for people to catch on. It's not really about you. It's more about them, you know, and, but yeah, that's definitely what can keep things like this going is knowing that while this, it has been fun for me, it has been the last year, um, very uplifting for me, but that's not enough to keep doing it, keep being vulnerable all the time. There has to be a greater reason for it. And then when I remember that it's for the next child, the next girl born into the rarity of mus muscle, muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. has to be, you know, who's, yes. who's, who's, who's joining people, who's doing something with her life beyond being pity, beyond, you know? Yeah. Like. Awesome. That's awesome. And then you mentioned that it's your passion to inspire and motivate others to pursue, pursue their dreams and contribute to society without being defined by one's physical appearance. Yeah. Can you, can you unpack that for me a little mm -hmm. bit? Yeah, it made me smile when you said it because it's something I truly believe is that we're what I'm trying to do through the platform that I'm currently building is help people understand that our strength is far beyond our physical strength, our our, our power as, as humans, um, and our strength and our greatness is far beyond our physical selves. So I could have a muscle disease, I could be weak, I could for some people I've met who've inspired me, they're, they don't have arms or legs. Um, but some of them are the most inspirational people I've met. 
um, because they tap into their inner strength, their, their heart, their soul, and they challenge that and they strengthen that. And that's what can really bring you to a level of greatness and help you take others with you. So true. Mm -hmm. So very true. Yeah. And that, that makes you strong, you know, that, mm -hmm. that makes your light shine. I mean, I can see it mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said your goal is to become a unifier by using the story of faith and, and perseverance. I mean, I know you've recovered that, but let's hear some more about that. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I've, I've learned growing up with a, with a medical condition and being slower than my peers or being um, weaker, because mine is muscle disease, so I'm oftentimes weaker. And I have five siblings, and I could not be like where I am today without the support and help of them. Yeah. Without my friends and my siblings uniting to bring me to where I am. And in return, I did the same for them. So I've learned that it takes unity. I don't believe you can. Well, I, I just believe that uniting and using everyone's strengths and everyone's um, talents is the best way to mm -hmm. change and to really bring yourself to the next level. So I want to see people of all different colors, faiths, um, abilities, join hands and truly, you know, break through whatever barriers they have. Beautiful. How old are you? Um, I'm 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm a very uh, diverse doctor, I guess, you know, I've studied many, many things. And one of the things that's really interested me are blue zones. I don't know if you know what blue zones are, but mm -hmm. there were people routinely live to be over a hundred or close to a hundred or over and are healthy mentally emotionally physically spiritually and there are like about five of them over the globe and if you look at the different zones ones in a couple of them are in italy ones in loma linda california of all places and mm -hmm. um they have things in common and one of the things they have in common and one of the things that we also know through research is family and community and group, you know, being in groups and holding hands and yeah. be, being friends and, you know, that that strengthens a person, yeah. not, not only emotionally and spiritually, but physically, that it makes mm -hmm. you more healthy. It affects your immune system. It affects everything, even probably your muscle strength. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just wanted to share yeah. that with you. That's that, very interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I've noticed some like a lot of the psychological things that I experience have physical effect on my on myself. So like mm -hmm. I see something about that, like like loud rooms and all of a sudden my voice is was weaker than it ever was. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like anything physical. Well, I guess the noise got louder, but in myself nothing. My voice just just doesn't work. It's cool how psychological uh -huh. things have such physical effects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love for you to read my book because it talks about that and it'll give you tools, more tools, how to strengthen yourself. And it's through... on, I can find that on Amazon? It? Yeah, uh -huh. it's, on pre, it's on pre-sales right now. It'll come out um, in print on May 31st. But, okay. But May you can secure your That's copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it so it talks about blue zones. It talks about how to how to and I say be your own blue zone. Mm -hmm. So you know if you if you are, and it sounds like you are to some degree. You know you definitely are. That's what triggered me to talk about it. What you zone. said, well, because you talked about how being with your friends and your family and your community it really helped you. And of course, faith is part of that because religion is part of that and people are part of that. So it's community. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing it. You're doing it in a sense, you know, you're doing that part of it. And there are other parts too. So 
Yeah. And and many of the things you talk about are things that people have, like you were talking about, you're not in control. Like yeah. the great teachers, the great masters teach that. So look look at you. You've you've come up with on your own these great teachings and and these are the things that exist within you know the higher realm. So wow. you didn't I'd love to learn more. I'd love to learn more. I'm excited. Um first of all to purchase your book. I'm excited to read that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, and Olivia is a great source too of these these types of things because she's been a student of spirit for many years. I mean, as I have, and you know, so that you can't not learn these things. But but you learn them. What's unique about you if is you've learned them on your own. It seems like, yeah, or maybe through, through your uh, that's through through um. Your well, faith. yeah, desperate, through faith for sure, but in desperate times, it's like sometimes my, my father always told me, you know, why do we teach you to pray? Why do we teach you to have faith? Mm-hmm. And it's because in desperate times, I don't know how to. I'll know where I'll know, you know, so there are some moments where I was so weak growing up. I was in a hospital, and all I wanted to do was go to school and see my friends and. But I turned to my faith and I understood I had no control and I made the best of the moments. So I guess my faith and my upbringing has really helped me to mm-hmm. see these, these, these things. So ha- have you um, read much about these kinds of things? And um, I've not, I've read not much about this actually. I just, no, I have not. It's just, it's just something that came to you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, there was a famous guy, I'm trying to think of his name, um, that wrote about concentration camps and resilience and um and hope and faith and i'm blanking on his name right now and um he he don't well regardless of his name but he what he noticed because he was a concentration camp survivor was Mm -hmm. that if when people lost hope because, you know, they didn't feed them at all, you know, or give them any kind of comfort or anything. But when they, as long as they had hope, they would, they would survive. And the moment they lost hope, they would die within actually minutes. Yeah. So it's pretty phenomenal how strong faith is and how important hope is. And that's, what you're an incredible symbol of is hope and faith. Yeah. Yeah, really, truly, at the last moment when you have nothing, whatever nothing means to you, whatever struggle means to you, you if you have hope, I mean, for me, it's like the last strength. It's, it's really, it's a strong thing, hope. Yeah, it can pull you through. It's, mm-hmm. And that's your sole path is to get that message out to people. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I specifically, you know, I have a passion for just helping children see it because it can get so dark. Mm-hmm. Oh, the guy's um, name is Victor Frankel. It just came to Victor me. Frankel. Yeah. Victor Frankel. Yeah. And he he wrote a book about that. And uh, it holds true in many, many mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. I've certainly used it (laughs) i must say i've been through i've been through the fire a few times myself and Mm -hmm. um so hope and faith are are so important keep us Mm -hmm. going and community and family Um, yeah yeah. so you have you have brothers and sisters i have 
Yes, I have three sis- three sisters and two brothers. Wow. Yeah, since big, it was a fun. Big family, huh? Yeah, it was a pretty big. Um, I'm going to have several people who live around the area who actually have. Um, I have a friend who I think has eight siblings. Wow. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, it Very is. Fun. Where do you live? I live in... Skokie, so in Ellen, like in one way, next near like 15 minutes from Chicago. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. So, you, you also say that your goal is to become a unifier. Mm hmm. Did we talk about this? Using the story of faith and perseverance. I think we just talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we touched on it, yeah. So what do you see yourself doing? Like, you know, you're young, you're 22, you're you're building your foundation and your platform and your foundation. And what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? In 10 years? Well, I'd like to continue speaking. In 10 years, I'd like to hopefully successfully have implemented the Physical Independence Day where every year we celebrate people's differences, not only advocate for them, not only accommodate accommodate them, but celebrate them. Um, I hope that in 10 years... What day is that? March 6th. Oh. This past March 6th, I climbed the mountain next March. I'll be doing the same thing and hopefully taking more. What mountain? Camelback Mountain. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I climbed the mountain for the, actually, the first one with muscular dystrophy to do so. And the reason that's important is because I want to prove through action that we're, we're far beyond, we're far beyond the limits that that so many have tried to, not tried to put on us, but through concern and Mm -hmm. the unknown they've put onto us. So I'm challenging uh, those limits um, in order to to help others. So in 10 years, I hope to be inspiring um, millions of people. I'm not on my own, but together is what I hope for. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I see that. I see that happening for you. I see that. And, you know, I try to teach all of my students, really, that they, and it's even more, it's even bigger, more uh, magnified when it comes from someone like you, but that, you know, they think they're, they're not enough. And not only are they enough, but they're way more than what they ever thought they were. If they really, yeah. you know, dip down into the power that's within them and connect to, the, to their God or the universe, whatever it is, their belief system, they're more powerful than they ever thought they could be. That's incredible that you're teaching people. It's so important for people to, to 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 be aware of that and to have someone who is reminding them. So so incredible job. I really, really respect that. Well, when it comes from someone like you though, it's even like I said, it's a bigger message. It's a more magnified message because here you are doing it. Yeah. Yes, with with the help of so many people you you should have seen just to get up that mountain. I think there were about 15 people helping me lift each leg. It was, there was dust, humidity, boulders, and I, I honestly didn't know it was going to be like huge boulders, Uh but but my sister was there, my mental coach, my physical trainer, my parents, friends, supporters from truly all over the world. They are helping this girl with muscular dystrophy achieve her dream. And wow. they show, yeah. 
it truly showed unity like 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 i've never seen before and wow yeah i hope that through the the film that we've made to show that i hope it can inspire others well that must have been thrilling for you also yeah it really was just to see the view from the top of the mountain and you did it you you know you did it that's great and God bless all the people that helped you and mm -hmm. came together over such a cause. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. So tell us, um, give my guests a, a couple of pearls. I mean, you already have, but, you know, in terms of how they might, you know, dig down deep in themselves to, to reach their own strength. Yeah. Oh, um, I love that question, and I think about it all the time, actually. Um, similar thoughts. I'll start with a quick story because my main message is that with gratitude, you truly cannot feel upset. You truly cannot feel lost if you're constantly listing why you're grateful, what blessings you have. And this quick story, I was um, five years old, I believe, four or five, five, five or six, maybe. It was my kindergarten class, and um, it was story time, and my teacher had told us all to come sit on the rug, and she was going to tell us a story. And I just, I remember thinking to myself I didn't want to sit on the rug because I knew that I'd have trouble getting up. Mm. I'd have to push on my leg as opposed to the other kids that would just jump right up. So I just I remember that. And so fast forward to age 16, 17, I was at camp and I, I had to sit on the floor to for an assembly or something. And so I did so. And when I tried to get up, I couldn't even get up by pushing on my leg. From that day on, I've gotten stronger, I've trained. But age 16 really helped me understand that we need to be grateful for what we do have and focus on what we do have. Yeah, and then fast forward to when I was 16, I had to sit down on the floor for an assembly at camp and I had to sit down for an assembly at camp and I remember I, I tried to get up and I couldn't even do so by pushing on my knee. Um, so at, the, at that moment I, I started to understand, not at that moment, but as I learned from, from that incident that we must be grateful for what we, keep, what we do have. We must focus on the things that we do have because they can be taken at any moment. And since age 16, I have worked with trainers and I've progressively gotten stronger little by little. Um, but it's scary to be at that moment where you lose even the things that you felt at some point you didn't want. Um, so you need to really, really focus on finding within all the chaos in your life, within all the struggles in your life, find those few things you're grateful for and focus on them. And people say, what's the key to happiness? What's the key to fulfillment? I truly do not believe there is an answer because no matter what we do with our lives, no matter what place we are as humans, we are wired to find what we could be doing better, what our life could be if we were so and so and so, but it's a mindset that will lead, lead you to better fulfillment and happiness, a mindset that even when you're at your darkest moments, you can look and you can find the light. So, um, Fulfillment and happiness, I truly believe, is a process. Um, and 
will come as we focus on strengthening our mentality. As as we focus on strengthening our what? I'm sorry. Our mentality. Oh yes. As we strengthening our mentality through gratefulness. Correct. Uh huh. No matter uh, what what is you are in life, you need to be able to pull yourself out of these struggles. Oh, absolutely. I, I believe that's the key to resilience because when you find yourself like you did, like in a situation. For instance, you were saying you couldn't get up off the floor. You know, if you recently I, I was in the hospital for some unknown reason. They never did find out what it was that was wrong with me, but it was it was pretty bad. And so what I figured out was you just you don't panic. Keep your hope and faith like you say, and then make your action plan. So if you make your action plan and, you know, if gratefulness is part of it, you know, be happy for the things you do have mm -hmm. and then figure out the things that you do have that can, they can help you out of that situation. Mm -hmm. So yes. see, once again, you, you're amazing because you're figuring out these great teachings that others have taken lifetimes to figure out, you know, so you're pretty incredible. I think you're 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 tuned in. You're you're connected. I think with the higher powers, with your God, and it's serving you well. Thank you, and it's so I'm so grateful to be meeting people like you and Olivia, and we just really celebrate, you know, celebrate that mentality or similar mentalities, and we can we can truly join together and and create such an incredible, uplifting impact on this world as you guys both have. Definitely, so definitely, because I agree with you because it's my belief that if, if the majority of us, you know, it doesn't have to be everybody because, again, we're so different, but we can be all different. But if the majority mm -hmm. of us have those kinds of thoughts, those positive thoughts, mm -hmm we will make this a better place to be and it'll happen. You'll see. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so too. So tell us, sorry. I was just going to say, it's really incredible to meet people who say those phrases, you know, we can better our world. We can change our world. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. We just need more people like you and me and Olivia and mm -hmm. they're out there and they're they're coming on board because people mm -hmm. wanna wanna have a better planet too. Yes. So tell me how how can my guests first of all do so if we wanted if someone wanted to have you come speak how would they mm -hmm. do that? Um. Cousin, how would they contact me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I do have a website mm -hmm. and. Um, in Instagram, the website is born to prove. So born to prove.com. Uh -huh. And my Instagram is my name. So Lily Brash, L I L Y B R E S C H. And yeah, all the contact information is on the website. Mm -hmm. born to prove and truly, I, I love to speak. I love to get the message out there. And, um, it's one of my greatest passions. And then also we just have cool, inspiring work. Um, you, I'm have, sorry, I missed that. You... Yeah, we just have um, inspiring works of art mm, coming mm -hmm. out with the documentary, the Die Strong documentary, which will follow. Oh, like the videos you were you were referring to? Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, they're beautiful. This will be a full link documentary, so we're really looking forward to that. Mm hmm Great. And um, so if people want to contact you for speaking or they want to contact you for any reason, that's how they would do it is through your website. Yes. And give it to us one more time. Born to prove.com. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, great. And the and the Instagram? My Instagram is Lily Brash. So L I L Y B R A S C H. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So it's been so wonderful to talk to you, and I hope we get to talk more in the future. And um, you'll you'll keep my number on your phone. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you, Dr. Reynolds. It's really been truly really an honor to meet with you. I appreciate it. It's an honor to meet you, dear. Okay. This is Dr. Gail Randall from Soul Stories and author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet. I want to thank Saltology, our sponsor at bathsalt.com, which fits perfectly into my medicine bag as, as it, like me, calls upon the ancient wisdom and modern technology to heal, especially with the stresses and ills of our modern times. The Bokak brand uses organic salts combined with organic essential oils sourced from ancient Egypt to provide a perfect remedy for your bathing ritual and healing from modern stresses. The Relief RX brand is a unique one-of-a-kind healing salt that uses organic CBD treated with a unique emulsification process to create nanoparticles which easily enter the skin to most effectively heal and relieve aching muscles and joints. Whether from chronic inflammation or just a rough workout, this is the perfect healing bath, especially when you add the organic essential oils of neroli, lavender, eucalyptus, or grapefruit. Your body, mind, and soul will be lifted and soothed like never before. Go now to bathsalt.com. I also want to give special thanks to Larry Antonino and Agora Borealis Recording Studio for music and score, and also to CloseToTheEarth.com for IT and computer assistance. I'm Dr. Gail Randall, creator and host of Soul Stories. I just want to thank you for listening to my podcast. I recently got a notification from the international podcast people, and I was astounded that so many countries are listening to my podcast in the category of alternative health. So thank you, and please continue to listen. I especially want to thank Egypt, Croatia, Japan, and Switzerland also France and Ireland, because my numbers were quite high there. So keep up the good work and check out my Instagram at Dr. Gail Randall, and particularly check out my Instagram TV, where you can hear me talking about alternative medicine subjects and also see me. It's a very good show, and I think you'll like the subjects. It's on 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Friday, but it's recorded there, so you can find it there anytime you look. Okay, thanks again. I love you guys. Also supported by Randall Wellness Network, bringing health and wellness to you directly. Medical futurist Dr. Gail Madeleine Randall brings 40-plus years as one of America's most forward-thinking doctors, healers, and emerging authors onto a diverse media platform to empower our paths to health, wellness, increased consciousness, and vitality. Gail Madeleine Randall, MD, has long practiced, taught, and encouraged patients to take control of their healing processes and journeys. Randall Wellness Network provides a 360-degree platform for people to heal themselves, and she most emphasizes regenerative approaches for healing individuals, communities, and the planet as one. For more information, go to drgmrandall.com and Instagram at drgailrandall.com and check out the robust Instagram series 
on Instagram TV, also Facebook, Randall Wellness, and also Dr. Gail Randall.